Hey kids, welcome to today's Tina's Terminology. I hope you're ready to expand your mind with a new word. Today's first word is ricochet. Ricochet is just another word for bounce. So why don't you count how many times I ricochet off this trampoline? Hey guys, it's me, Sky. Today, we're at 2 Infinity Extreme Sports Park in Lakeland to learn all about trampolines and the fun things that you can do on them. Come inside and check it out. I'm here with Jacob Blair, one of the managers here at 2Infinity. He's going to tell us all about how to have fun and stay safe when you visit a trampoline park like this one. What is a trampoline park? So a trampoline park is a building full of trampolines and all kinds of exercise equipment. And it's a lot different than a lot of other recreational theme parks. Not only are, can people come here and have fun and spend time with their family, but they're getting their exercise in as well. What is the difference between a trampoline at home and a trampoline at a park like this one? So most families have probably like one normal sized trampoline in their backyard. Here we have a multitude of trampolines and we have regular trampolines and then we have a Euro trampoline. A Euro trampoline is trampolines that are used in uh, Olympic sports, which those are expensive and rare to get or find at home. While they're here, people can pay and jump on it here. What types of activities can people do when they come here? There's all kinds of different types of trampolines here. We have uh, regular trampolines, an open jump field, trampolines aimed into foam pits so kids can jump into the foam pit. We have a dodgeball court, a basketball court where kids can dunk. Uh, we have a ninja course for kids to climb across monkey bars. And we have a Euro tramp where kids can bounce off their back and climb up a wall. How can kids stay safe at the trampoline park? We have flight crew members stationed all around the park to ensure our safety here and our safety standards. We have a safety rule board that parents have to read and the kids are also addressed at the rules at the ramp as well as they come into the park. So our number one rule here is one person at a time on all the equipment, on the trampolines, the ninja course, the foam pits, one at a time on everything. One thing we also try to enforce onto our guests is that you should not try to exceed passion limits. So just because that one guy can do a double front flip doesn't necessarily mean you can do it. You have to make sure you do stuff within your limits. We also re recommend and encourage and enforce we don't allow people to run here, especially rain on the trampolines because it can be dangerous. You can fall, you can land differently, you can land awkwardly and hurt your leg. So we enforce those rules heavily. What type of equipment do you need to jump here? So to come into our park, you have to be barefoot or have our grippy socks. Our grippy socks have rubber grips on the bottom that allow people not to slip or fall. You have to have one of those so you don't slip. Also, we have rubber padding throughout all the trampolines in case people fall on them, land on them, or trip and fall. It saves your fall and makes it safer for you. What are some do's and don'ts for jumping? One of the main rules, which a lot of people do at home, is double bouncing. Double bouncing is when two people are jump jumping consecutively onto a trampoline at once, and the momentum from one of them on the trampoline flings another person up, which can cause many different injuries. People can break their legs, can, can sprain their ankles. Here, we do not allow any double bouncing at our trampolines. So double bouncing is one of them. <laughs> don't land on your head. And we don't allow gainers either. A gainer is a backflip moving forwards. You can front flip and do a backflip, but you can't backflip moving forwards, which is what we call gainer. Are there any benefits to jumping on a trampoline? So a trampoline is a cardiovascular workout. We've had many success stories of people coming in here and losing lots of weight and getting their summer bodies everybody wants. So here, not only are you having fun, but you can lose all the weight as well. Can you describe some different types of exercises while you're on it? So there's the normal jump, which is a lot of cardiovascular. People like to do flips. We have hanging foam balls that people can grab onto and try to build their momentum up to climb up there. We have a spine that people like to jump over, and we also have a square foam that people can jump on top of and do flips off of. Which exercise is your favorite one? I would have to say our Euro Tramp is my favorite. That is when you bounce off your back and you climb up the wall and try to slap the roof. It's definitely a thing that you need a lot of skill for and a lot of training for, but it is the most fun in my opinion. Can you talk about some cool tricks that people do here on your trampolines? Uh, front flips, back flips. Mm, some people do twirls in the airs and do different tucks. A lot of cheerleaders will come here, or people who do gymnastics come here and train and practice off time so they can have fun and train at the same time. 
So a lot of mixtures of those. Is there anybody who should not jump on a trampoline? If you have an injury, you should definitely let yourself heal first before you can come here and jump. We'll always be here. So if you have an injury, let it heal because it can get worse if you're jumping on a trampoline. Thanks so much, Jacob. This place is a great, unique experience here in Polk County and it's fun for kids and adults alike. I'm going to go get my bounce on, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye! It's me, Ariana, and I'm here at Exploration's Five Children's Museum for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Sue. She's going to be helping us with our activity today. So, Sue, what do you have us doing? We are making some clothespin racers today. That sounds so like fun. So I don't fun. know if you're into speedways, but we're going to start out. We'll use the table as our speedway. We'll tilt it up, but okay. we're going to start out making a racer. So what does the car need to roll? Um, wheels. Wheels. Very good. Yes. But there's another piece to that besides the wheel. You have to have something that goes from one wheel to the other so it actually will roll. Oh. So you need to have an axle. Axle. Okay. So our axle is going to be a piece of straw and our bread twist tie is going to fit inside the straw with the buttons on the end so that this can turn inside Very there. creative. All right. So we're going to start out. Just need a short piece of straw. Okay. Um, but you're going to need one for the front and the back. We'll do this together. So we'll both make one. So um, about two inches or so, inch and a half, two inches worth of straw. One for the front and one for the back. Okay. Okay. So we've got two pieces, two short pieces there. Now the fun part is to take this bread tie and kind of scrunch it up a little bit because it has to go through the straw and has to hang out on both ends. Okay. To okay. hold the wheels. To hold the wheels. Yes. Right. Okay, so is it going to fit through your straw there? Yes, I hope right. it does. It We're does. using buttons. Now I've got, these are all the same size buttons. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you've got wheels of the same size in the front and wheels of the same size in the back. You could have two different ones. Oh. So what I'm going to do is just take that bread tie and again, mush up the end of this bread tie. Put it through the hole so in the button. Fits. Okay, bring it back around. I've got to get it to fit. Oh, okay. there it is. Got it to fit. Yes. Um, and then let it, let a little piece of it hang down here. Like okay. This. Okay. Just like but that. then you want your button to be straight like this, oh. so because you your axle has to come straight off your wheel. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to slide. Whoops. I'm going to slide my straw. Okay. So it covers up that extra end there. Okay. All right. But then I'm going to twist it to make sure that my wheel stays right where I want it to stay. Well, there you go. Okay, so there's one side, just like that. Now, it's oh, not wow. going to roll very far like that. I go around <laughs> in a circle. Yes. But you do the same thing to the other end, which is going to be a little more difficult because we already have one shoved in there, and our piece of bread tie wire is a little bit shorter. Mm. Okay, but the same sort of deal. Put it in and fold it in half. Make sure that your button is going to be standing up straight okay. after you get it through. Yes. Okay, and then we're going to the twist straw. it. Make sure that it stays there, and then we're going to try and get that extra end back down in there again, okay. if we can. Might not be able to. Just needs to get out of the way. Okay. We don't want it to be like this. Oh yeah, you did much better than I did. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so there we got one axle. Now it should, it should roll a little bit. There you go. Rolling. Even if it wobbles a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to do the other one the same way because we've got to have a front axle and a back axle for our car to be able to work. So okay. same thing. Two more. Two more buttons, two, another twist tie, and work it through the same way. Button goes through there, and you want it to be twisted on there and almost look like a little umbrella standing up like that. Oh, okay. Okay. These are our back set of wheels. Yep. They are. Twist, twist, twist. Okay. All right, so we got two sets. All yes. right, now one is going to go right through this hole right here in the clothespin. Okay because the axle fits very carefully in there and it will still, the twist tie inside can still roll. Yep. Now the other one we have to put in the back, but what happens in here? Is that one going to stay in there? No, not. No, but I have this wonderful washi tape, which I heard you say, oh, washi, washi tape. tape. <laughs> so that we're, all we're going to do is put a little piece around the back of our clothespin in order to make our wheels stay there and not roll right out. Okay. So you can have your color choice. This I'm going to take mine here. It's more difficult than you made it look. 
Yeah. There we go. Here we there go. There we go. All right, so make sure that your axle is still going to go. It's not stuck into the tape. Okay. Okay. That's good. Are you ready? All right, yes. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way here. Now, if it doesn't work exactly right, we'll make some minor adjustments. I'm going to move these things out of the way here, and we're going to fix our table so it will be a nice inclined plane, and then we'll be able to see who's racing. Whose racer is faster? Okay. Maybe a little more. Sometimes, sometimes it pinches it a little bit too much in here. So if we put a little spacer in here, and pinch that just a little. Put a little. There you go. Just to keep that open a little bit more, so it doesn't squish your axle. See if that works. Yeah. Oh, it's working Woo! a lot better. All right. Are you ready to race? Yes, absolutely. All right. I think we need a starting line. What do you think? I think. All right. So, are you ready? Yes. You're going to do it on your mark? You want to count? Um, count to three. Okay. One, One two, two, three. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. oh, bye. You know what? You've got a spacer. I'm going to try a spacer and see okay. if that works. Oh. Might be going like crazy. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. three. What is wrong with these guys? Oh no, they're stuck. There we go. Woo! I beat. <laughs> well, thank you. That was so much fun. <laughs> if you really want to put your senses into overdrive, come here to Exploration's Five Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. See you again soon. Bye bye. Our first word of the day was ricochet. Ricochet is a verb, meaning to bounce off of something at an angle. For example, you have to be really careful when you're jumping on a trampoline because you might ricochet off of somebody else. The thing is, I don't understand what I'm doing here and why am I dressed in dogs. Oh, um, hello and welcome to story time. In this episode, our book is called The Best Flea. Uh, <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a flea named Desmond. Desmond worked for a flea circus. Well, I've heard of pop-up books, but never pop-out books. Get back in there. All right, fine, you can listen, but be quiet. <clears throat> Desmond worked in a flea circus. Unfortunately, he was always in the chorus. You see, every year there were auditions for those who would ride the dog in the center ring. Every year, they would have competitions on climbing and... Hmm? They would have competitions on climbing and balance and jumping. That's enough of that. Desmond wanted very badly to be in the center ring. So when the competitions came up, he decided to do his very best. The first competition was climbing. And though he tried very hard, poor Desmond came in second. The second competition was balancing. And although he balanced very well, Desmond still came in second. The third competition was jumping. Desmond jumped very high. Now stop that. Desmond jumped very high, but sadly not high enough and once again, he was second. The next day, those who were chosen were riding around in the center ring on the dog when suddenly a beautiful dog from outside came into the circus tent. Now, all of the fleas wanted to go out and explore the world, so they decided to try and get on this new dog. The first flea, who was very good at climbing, climbed on, but he wasn't very good at balancing and fell off. The second flea was very good at climbing. He climbed, but 
Again, he couldn't jump to the top, so he fell off. The third flea jumped as high as he could, landed on the dog, and because he couldn't balance, he fell off. Desmond decided to do his very best. He jumped as high as he could and landed on the dog. He climbed up between the dog's ears and balanced with everything he had. And the dog, who decided to go back home, left the tent and Desmond went exploring. Well, there you are. You see, the moral of this story is not to be the best, but in life, to do your best. Uh, uh, oh well, that was my best. Bye-bye. Do you want to come back in the book? Uh, all right. Just take a quick jump around and then come back, all right? Good. Welcome, I mean, thank you for another episode of Storytime. Hey kids, it's me, Dion, and I'm here at Lakeland's super cool trampoline park, To Infinity. Jumping on a trampoline is lots of fun, but did you know that it can also be a great workout too? It even has a name. Jumping on a trampoline for exercise is called rebounding, and it has lots of great health benefits. It can improve your balance, your endurance when you're doing cardio, like jumping or running, and it can even burn fat. Now, if you're gonna jump on a trampoline, make sure that you have a parent or an adult present so you don't hurt yourself. Today, I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can exercise on a trampoline. But if you're at home and you don't have a trampoline, you can definitely do these along with me. To start off, let's do a warm up. We're gonna do a light jump. It doesn't have to be high. We just wanna get our legs moving and our blood flowing so you can jump super high for the fun stuff. Now that you're all warmed up, let's start with an easy exercise. This one's a classic and we all know how to do it. Let's do some jumping jacks. If you're doing jumping jacks on a trampoline, then it'll reduce the impact on your joints like your knees, so it makes it way easier to do it. If you're doing it at home, you can definitely do these in your living room too. But if you're on a trampoline and you want to do extra and go really high, you can jump extra high and do star jumps. This makes it a little bit harder, but it's a much better workout. going to do squats. You've seen me do squats before. Remember last month with the blueberries? Well, this time, since I'm on a trampoline, I'm going to do something even more exciting. We're going to do jump squats. So we're going to get down in a squat and jump up in the air like this and land in a squat. It's kind of like I'm playing leapfrog, only I'm not going anywhere and there's no one else here. You can do this, do this at home too, but just make sure you don't hurt yourself on the landing. Next, we're gonna do some high knees. We're gonna start with the modifier. You can do these just standing up in place like this, but make sure that you raise your knee pretty high so you can get the most impact out of it. You can also do it like that on a trampoline, like this. Kind of like you're skipping. If you're feeling extra adventurous on the trampoline, you can do a double high knee. Try to bring your legs up between your hands so that you get the highest impact. exercise that we're going to do, you definitely can't do at home because you will probably get hurt, but you'll want to do it on the trampoline because it's so much fun. It's called a butt bounce and it's just like it sounds. You're going to jump up in the air, your feet will fly out from under you, and you'll land on your butt. Then you'll get back up and land back on your feet. It's a great workout for your core, which is your back and your stomach area, because all of that has to be really tight for you to land on your butt. Getting up might be hard and you might fall down sometimes, but that's part of the fun of it. Watch.
these are just a few exercises that you can do to get active on a trampoline. But of course, the easiest and the most fun way to get active is just start jumping. Make sure that you're always safe, don't do anything that you're not sure of, and of course, have fun. I'll see you next time on Power Up. Hello kids, thanks for joining me for this special edition of All in the Numbers. Today, we're here with the Brain Food team at 2Infinity, where we're gonna bounce our way through some math equations. Did you ever wonder why you might need to know math in your everyday life? Well, today, we're gonna do some real-world examples of math. Now, these math problems are pretty hard, so you might wanna pause the video and go get a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, Someone with a cell phone probably has a calculator app that they can let you use. Now, do you see Dion there? Well, he wants to get down from that podium. So he's gonna have to jump pretty far over there to be able to do that. To figure out just how far he's gonna have to jump, we'll do some geometry. So here is the pit. It's where Dion wants to go into. And up here is Dion. And where Dion wants to jump to is right here. And we want to figure out what the distance is from Dion to his landing spot. See what we have right there? That's right, it's a triangle. It's actually a right triangle because one angle of it is a right angle, or 90 degrees. So we want to find the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle opposite of the right angle. So if side A is six feet and side B is eight feet, then we'll use the Pythagorean theorem formula to determine the hypotenuse. I know it's a mouthful, right? The formula says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A is six squared plus B, which is eight squared equals C squared. Let's figure this out. Six squared means six times six, so that's 36. And side B is eight squared, so eight times eight is 64. So we add these together and we have 100 equals C squared. All right, but how do we go further? Because we can't possibly know what C squared is, right? It's a, it's a letter. So to get rid of that pesky number two there, we'll do a square root. You see, a square is always canceled out by a square root. Now, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. So we find the square root of 100. Square roots can be kind of tricky. So if you can't figure them out yet, just use a calculator. So the square root of 100 is 10. So Dion is gonna have to jump 10 feet to be able to land in his spot. All right, way to go, Dion. All right, so are you ready to do another math problem? Let's say Trisha wants to bounce from this trampoline to this trampoline. Because she's going to have to jump up into the air and come back down, we can't just figure the distance as a straight line. We have to figure the total arc of her jump. So basically, if Trisha jumps from here to here, she's jumping a half of a circle. See? Anytime we deal with circles, we're going to be dealing with pi. That's pi. Pi is a very special number that was created to help us figure things out that have circles. This special number is 3.14. The funny thing is, is that pi's are actually circles. So that'll help you to remember to use this special number when dealing with circles. So if we want to find the perimeter or the outside distance of a half a circle, then we're gonna to need to find the perimeter of a full circle and divide that in half. To find the perimeter of a circle, we can take pi times the diameter. The diameter is the distance from one point of a circle to the exact opposite point of that circle. In this case, the diameter is the distance straight across from where Trisha jumps to where she lands. So our diameter is six feet. Six times pi is 18.84. So if we were to draw this whole circle, 
it would be 18.84 feet to go the whole way around. But since we only want to do half of the circle, we will divide it in half. So 18.84 divided by 2 is 9.42. So for Trisha to jump from this trampoline to this other trampoline, she'll need to jump 9.42 feet. Hey, she did it. All right, way to go, Trisha. Now, these were some really hard math questions, but you know what? Isn't it fun when you can figure things out like this? Just remember, the world around you is made up of all kinds of math. It's all in the numbers. Our second word of the day is agile. Agile is an adjective, which means quick or well-coordinated in movement. For example, if you practice jumping on trampolines, you may become more agile or have quicker reflexes. Hey guys, it's me, Bo. It's time to make another simple snack, and I hope that you all brought your sweet tooth because I have a delicious frozen treat in store for us. Today's recipe is a twist on your normal ice cream sandwich, and it's called a yogurt witch. We only need three ingredients for this one. You'll need graham crackers, frozen yogurt, and chocolate chips. You'll also need a spoon for your frozen yogurt. To start off, we're going to take two graham crackers out of the package. These are the base for our sandwich, just like the chocolate cookie in a regular ice cream sandwich. Now open your frozen yogurt. I'm using regular vanilla yogurt today, but you can use any flavor that you want to make it tastier for you. Take your spoon and spread the frozen yogurt onto one of your graham crackers. Use as little or as much as you want, but be careful, if you put too much on it, it could get pretty messy. Once you're finished adding the yogurt, take the second graham cracker and smash them together to make your sandwich. You might think we're done now, but not so fast. This next part is my favorite one. Pour some of your chocolate chips out onto the plate. You're going to use these to add some of our extra flavor to our snack. Grab your yogurt witch and hold it on its side like this. Roll the edges of the frozen yogurt in the chocolate chips like I'm doing. They should stick onto the edge and it will make your treat extra yummy. If you don't want to roll your yogurt witch on in the chips, you can also put them on individually and control exactly how much chocolate you'll get. Let's try it together. Mmm, that's a great snack for a hot floor today. Invite your friends over and have a yogurt witch making party this summer to help you cool down. Or make them with your parents for dessert after dinner. There's never a bad time for one of these. That's all I have for today. I'm Bo. Join me next time for another simple snack. <laughs>